For sale by owners, this video is for you. This video could be considered a checklist for anyone thinking about selling their home on their own. And I know I've been in real estate for a long time. I've heard all the excuses. Either you wanna save the commission or the job is so easy, you can do it yourself because all realtors do is take photos, put a sign in the yard and hope that it sells. Well, guess what? I'm gonna tell you the things that you need to do or consider to sell your home. And if you're asking yourself, Chris, why would you give that information away? I'll be transparent and tell you that the secret sauce isn't really in getting the house under contract. The magic happens and the real negotiations happen after the home is under contract until it gets to the settlement table. And if you can navigate those waters, well then you should be a real estate agent because anyone, especially in this market that we've recently gone through, can find a buyer. So I'm going to tell you some of the things that you need to consider if you're going to be selling your home on your own. But before we do a little bit of house cleaning, I'm Chris Nelson, the team lead of the Nelson Home Group, helping buyers and sellers achieve their real estate dreams here in the greater Philadelphia area. So if you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time, welcome. Either way, do me a favor. If you haven't already, mash that red button, hit that bell, and consider dropping me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. So the first thing you need to do if you're gonna be selling your home is to do a little bit of research. That's right, you have to do some research on the market. And some of that research is gonna include just market trends, being aware of current interest rates, what's going on in the mortgage industry, what grants buyers may be using, what type of loans are out there that will help you market your property to the right buyer. This is also where you're gonna want to find out about any for sale by owner laws in your area. Right, so here in Pennsylvania, we need to have a seller's disclosure affiliated with every traditional sale. So you're gonna to need to research what a seller's disclosure is and where to get one because you're gonna need that document when you go to sell your property. This is also where you're gonna to need to figure out what's customary when you need to pay some sort of a commission. And I know for sale by owners usually don't pay a commission, but you'll be surprised how many people will come and potentially make an offer on your home and they're represented by an agent. And a lot of times that agent wants to be compensated and they look to you, the seller, to pay them. So you might wanna know what's customary. And this kind of falls under research, but the next thing you're gonna to want to do is start to figure out what your house might be worth in this market. And I emphasize in this market because this market in 2023 and moving into 2024 is nothing like the market we just went through during the pandemic. That was an extremely atypical market where pricing wasn't very important. Buyers picked the price regardless of what the house was listed for. But now that we're in a different market and there is buyer uncertainty and inflation and all these moving mechanics, it is in your best interest to know what your home value is. The fact that your neighbor's home may have sold for $500,000 does not indicate that your house is worth $500,000. There's a lot of things to take into consideration, such as size, condition, amenities, maybe even the view that your property offers versus the view of the neighboring property, pools, which does kind of classify as an amenity, but there's all of these moving mechanics that comes into play when you need to determine the value of your home. So hopefully you are good and analytical and willing to spend some time to really unpack what you should be listing your house for, because if not, I promise you in today's market, it will result in extended days on market, price reductions, and maybe you not finding that buyer that you're hoping for. Next on the list is getting the house ready for the market. Now, while you're getting the house ready for the market, meaning allowing the general public in, hopefully this is also your time to get your property ready for marketing, right? We all know that most buyers start their search online. And if your home isn't properly displayed online, doesn't look attractive and connect those dots with the buyer, well, you're probably going to struggle. So you wanna prepare your house. You wanna make sure that you are doing a deep clean, not only inside, but outside. You wanna make sure that you're cleaning the windows. You wanna make sure that the blinds are functional and that you can open them and let in a lot of natural daylight. You wanna make sure that the house has curb appeal. You wanna make sure that all of the light bulbs are the same color and that they all work. You wanna make sure that the house smells good. All of these, and trust me, there's a lot of other things to consider. You can 
can go online and Google a list of things to do to prepare your house for the market, but trust me when I tell you, it's a lengthy list. So if you are doing it on your own, just be prepared to go and do all these things to get your house ready for the market so that it does look great in your marketing. Maybe if you're doing a video or a 360 tour, which I highly suggest because per the National Association of Realtors, properties that offer a virtual tour on average get 57% more online views than a home that doesn't. So hopefully you're taking that into consideration. So now let's assume all that's done. You got all that out the way, the house looks great. Now you found a buyer and now you need to negotiate the terms. So hopefully you're good at negotiating and knowing all of the terms that are in that agreement of sale. And here in PA, it's several pages long. You know, you do need to understand that just because the purchase price may say $500,000, that doesn't mean that you're getting $500,000. So learning how to read the contract and negotiate within the legal terms of that contract, that's not something that the average person can do. So as we mentioned earlier, maybe when you're doing your research, you also want to research your state contract and find out how it should be filled out, what language to look for, and is there anything in there that you may want to be aware of so that you can negotiate that when a buyer does present an offer on your home. Another thing to consider now that you're under contract is the buyer is more than likely going to do some type of inspection. A home inspection, they may even have an appraisal that could result in repairs or maybe there's an appraisal issue where the house doesn't appraise for the sale price. You have to know how to navigate those waters because those situations there quite often are the reason a deal will fall apart, which goes back to my previous statement. Finding the buyer and going under contract isn't the difficult part. The negotiations and all of the legwork that happens after the papers are signed and you're making your way to the settlement table, that's where the challenge really starts to come into play. And last but not least, the closing process right now usually there's going to be a title company involved which you can leverage people at the uh, the title company but you need to be aware is there anything that you're responsible for are you responsible for ordering in any tax certifications or if you're in a condo or homeowners association are you responsible for ordering and delivering resale packages if so how do you do that who do you contact and then being able to unpack digest and understand the documents that are presented at closing most importantly the closing disclosure or the alta the one that has the numbers to make sure that you're being charged accurately and that your proceeds are being projected accurately. That's a pretty important document, but needing a level of understanding how to move through that. So these are all things that, again, if you are going to sell your house on your own, it's not as simple as you may think. And we definitely went over a couple things to consider, but we didn't do a deep dive on all the things that you should be doing to prepare your house for the market, all the contracts and documents that you're gonna need to sell the house. All of that good stuff is, well, it's a lot, but this will help you if you are thinking about selling your home on your own. And if you really think taking on all of those things is worth saving five or 6%, well then, have at it. Hopefully you can get it to the closing table and hopefully you're ready to orchestrate lock boxes, scheduling showings, confirming showings, following up to see if there's feedback from those showings. That in itself is a daunting task. So with all that said, my friends, hopefully you found some value to this video. Again, do me a favor, drop me a comment. Let me know that if you sold your home on your own, what was that experience like? What did you wish you knew or, or avoided? And if you're thinking about selling your home on your own, let me know if this video was of any value to you. Once again, I'm Chris Nelson, the team lead of the Nelson Home Group helping buyers and sellers achieve their real estate dreams here in the greater Philadelphia area. Until next time, take care.